another Sunday meal prep, y'all. But this one's special because we're coming up on Christmas. So I've got my Christmassy attire on, feeling all comfy, kind of feeling the pajama vibe today. But we're gonna do some baking and we're gonna do some food prep for the week. So I'm super excited to try these recipes and share them with you. I did not get a whole lot of meal prep, typical meal prep done, like we talk about, you know, getting meals and lunches and all that kind of stuff done, but it's a different week. And I'm always telling y'all, use your meal prep to make your life easier, to set yourself up for success. And what I needed for success this week was to knock out some stuff for my party. So when it's time to prep for the party, I'm not gonna be spending hours cooking, I'm just gonna be assembling tomorrow. I'm making a cheese and meat charcuterie board and I'm gonna make like a cookie charcuterie board type thing. I'm gonna have these dips and then all these different cookies and then the cheese board will have all kinds of cheese and meat. So getting this stuff done and out of the way is gonna be so, so, so helpful for me. So for me, this is what I needed this week. And then for meals, we'll do things like pull things out of the freezer. That's one of the reasons I tell y'all to do freezer prep because some weeks you don't have time to do the typical meal prep. So meal prep can mean a bunch of different things. You know, it's whatever you need to help you be more successful. That First thing we're going to do is get some stuff in the crock pot that needs to get going. I'm making some spiced nuts. So I am doubling my recipe. So this is six cups of nuts, I believe is what it is. It's a mixture. I've got almonds, I've got hazelnuts, I've got macadamia nuts, I've got cashews, just a few cashews, not many. But this is what we're going to use. This is our sugar mixture. It's Lakanto Classic, which is a sugar substitute, Sucrin Gold, which is a brown sugar substitute, some cinnamon, a little bit of salt, and a little bit of pumpkin pie spice. So this is a lot, a lot of sugar. I don't know if we're gonna use it all, but I weighed out what the recipe said to use and I will post the recipe down below. But the first thing that I'm supposed to do is put some egg whites, I'm doubling it, so two egg whites, and we're gonna mix those up in our KitchenAid here until we can get it nice and fluffy and aerated. Right, so these are well coated in the egg whites. The next thing we're going to do is put them in the crock pot. I have, this is the crock pot that I use y'all. It's all clad and what I love about it, really, really heavy duty that comes out. So you can put this on the stove top to saute things in or sear things in and then put it in here to finish or you can even put this into the oven. So it's really, really awesome. So we are going to dump our nuts into the crock pot and then we'll toss it with our cinnamon sugar mixture. All right, here's the cinnamon sugar mixture I tossed in. I left about half of it over here because it just seemed like so much. So I'm gonna toss this and then I will let you know if I add the rest. This is all stirred up y'all and I feel like it has way too much sugar mixture in it. I'm glad I didn't put the rest, but I follow the directions exactly. So we shall see, we shall see. So what it says to do now is cook on low for three and a half hours with the lid on and stir every 20 minutes or so. And then after that, we add some water, stir, and go another half an hour. So that's what we're gonna do. I recruited some help, y'all. Caroline's gonna pick apart this chicken for me. That's gonna go into buffalo chicken casserole and I'm not sure what else we're making with the rest of it. But Caroline, thank you so much, girl. The next thing we're gonna make is gingerbread cookies. I haven't decided if I'm gonna cut them out like gingerbreads or just do circles. We shall see. But this is what we're gonna need. We need almond flour, we need Lakanto Classic, we need a series of spices, ginger and cloves and nutmeg and cinnamon, butter and eggs, some baking powder, and it called for molasses. I don't have any molasses, so I'm gonna use this Yacon syrup. I think that it will work perfectly in place. It's only a tablespoon, so I think that's gonna work. I'm gonna start getting this together, and then I'll be right back. I will have this recipe listed down below. I saw this recipe on Nicole Burgess's site, and I will definitely link it down below so you can go watch her make it. 
for our we've got our wet ingredients in here some sugar some butter some eggs usually instructions say to cream your butter and your eggs first and then you add your eggs but this one said to put it all together so i hope that was right we shall see That looks good. It formed together really well. So what we're supposed to do now is just scrape it, put it in a bowl, in a ball. I'm just going to put it back into this bowl and we're going to put it in the refrigerator and let it chill for a bit. All right, the next thing we're going to make is a gingerbread loaf, like a gingerbread cake. So I've got my dry ingredients all measured out and my sugar and my butter and I have three eggs. I need a fourth egg so I sent Jason to the store yet again. Poor guy. This will be like trip number six in two days for him. I have not been organized as well as I should y'all. Let's throw this together while we're waiting on our dough in the refrigerator to get a little bit more manageable and then we'll go roll that out. Alright, for this one it says in a mixing bowl, cream together the butter and sweetener to light and fluffy, and then add the eggs one at a time. That's what I'm used to doing. That's what I should have done with the last one, but we shall see what happens. All right, let's make some gingerbread, y'all. Ignore my dirty sink, but I just wanted to show you a trick. I don't think I've ever showed you this before. If you have some butter that is hard, like it hasn't, hasn't gotten soft and you need it to get soft fast, here is a trick. You take your butter, you just stand it up like that, and then you get really, really hot water going in your sink. So I've had water going into this cup for a few minutes. It's super, super, super hot. Then you dump your water out, and you put your cup upside down over the butter. You, depending on how hard your butter is, you may have to repeat this a few times, but it really, really works, y'all. It will soften your butter to room temperature so, so much more quickly without melting it like you can do in the microwave so easily. So there's just a little bonus tip. I don't think I've ever sh shared that before. I lined this loaf pan with parchment and we're just gonna dump it in. It doesn't seem like very much either, but I used exactly what it said. I went back and looked at the ingredients again. Like, it doesn't seem like very much batter happening here at all. And it does not look like gingerbread colors to me. So, I don't know, y'all. I don't know. This is going to go in a 350 degree oven now. Let's check on these candied nuts back here, y'all. It said every 20 minutes to come give them a toss. I'm still worried that they have way too much sugar sweetener, but I didn't even use but half of what the recipe called for, so we're just gonna have to trust y'all. Having some faith back here, trying to just have some faith. Then we will, I think we're gonna go ahead and throw together our egg casserole while we're waiting on Jason to come back from the store with everything else that we need. Eight eggs and then I'm gonna do a little bit of heavy cream and a little bit of sour cream in it mix it with some spicy all-purpose fresh jacks and some cheese and then for seasoning I'm gonna use fresh jack spicy all-purpose this is probably one of my all-time favorite spices ever it is so awesome so I'm almost out of this, y'all. I just ran out of my toasted onion, which is one of my very, very favorites. This is my other favorite, and I'm about to use the end of it. All gone. I've got to get a fresh Jack's order placed ASAP. We're just gonna pour this right over the top. And then I just use whatever cheese I have on hand. I'm gonna put this in the same 350 degree oven back here. There we go. I'm gonna clean up a little bit, then we're gonna get that gingerbread rolled out. We'll see how that works out, y'all. We're gonna take a piece of parchment paper, lay it down, then we are going to plop a portion of our dough. I'm gonna try and take about half of it here, put it on here, and then we're gonna top it with another piece of parchment. Let's see. 
see if I can figure out where my rolling pin was. Ha! I found it. One of the things of having your family help you with the dishes, it is phenomenal. I love it. But sometimes I have to like go on a scavenger hunt to find my stuff because different kids put it away in different places. Does that happen at y'all's house? But I don't care because I am so grateful that they do dishes. They load dishes. They empty dishes. They do so many chores around here and it is so helpful. I'm going to try my best to make this somewhat of a rectangle. Who knows if that's actually going to happen. Alright, it's roll. This paper is like going all over the place. I don't know if there's something I could put under it to make it stay in place. I don't know. All of you bakers, as you're watching me do all these things, please, please, please give me tips down below. Tell me what I'm doing wrong. Tell me what I could do to make things more easy. Tell me anything about baking that I that you're laughing at me about because I am, I will say, I'm a great cook. Like, I feel like I'm pretty talented in the savory department. In the baking department, yeah, not good. Not good, y'all. All right, I'm not sure how thin I'm supposed to do this. I don't know. It's looking like a rectangle, though. All right, I'm not sure how thin I'm supposed to do this. I don't know. All right, we're just gonna say that that's where we want it to be. I'm worried about how they're gonna transfer from here to the other baking sheet. You know what? I think I'm not gonna try and transfer them. I think I'm just gonna put, yeah. Okay, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna put this right onto this cookie sheet here. I'll just pull the dough out in between and leave the ones that I had cut out. I think that's the safest option. I'm gonna put this whole thing in the freezer for a couple minutes just to firm up so it'll be easier to tear off. I don't know, we'll see. All right, y'all, I took this out. Y'all, I decided I'm not making any more gingerbread. That was just too much work. So we are gonna turn them into just like little flat, little flat gingerbread cookies. All right, I'm gonna throw those in the same oven. Okay, while the cookies are finishing, I am going to make some coleslaw real quick. I am just going to do a jerk chicken coleslaw. I don't always add sour cream to coleslaw, but I have like barely any left in here, and I just wanna use it up. So we're going in with some sour cream, just because I don't wanna waste. I'm going to use Island Spice by Fresh Jacks. It's a Jamaican jerk. It's very spicy. This is not for me. I cannot handle this spice these days, but my husband loves to have coleslaw to eat on. Y'all see me make it pretty much weekly, and this is one of his favorite versions. So I asked what he wanted, and he said Jamaican jerk. So I'm going to put a couple tablespoons of apple cider vinegar, and then I put a little bit of sweetener to combat that. So this is just some Lakanto sweetener. I just put a couple tablespoons of that. And then the last ingredient is just mayonnaise. So basically my coleslaw always consists of mayonnaise, apple cider vinegar, a little bit of sweetener, and then whatever spice I want. So you can change it up a ton of different ways with different spices. Sometimes I throw chicken in to make it like a complete meal. Just like my egg casseroles are a place where I like to like use up stuff from the fridge, coleslaw is kind of that same way around here. But today we're just making a basic island jerk coleslaw. Coleslaw, one more thing down. Let's check on the cookies. I don't know how to tell when they're done, y'all. She said 12 to 15 minutes. It's been about 12. I'm just gonna give them a couple more. I don't know. 
Hey y'all, hey, if you are new to my channel, I would love for you to stop and take a second and hit that subscribe button if you are liking what you're seeing. I do meal preps every single Sunday. On Saturdays, I typically share what my grocery haul looks like and what my meal plan for the week is. On Wednesdays, I do a what I eat in a day, keto style, and then I throw stuff in sporadically. So if you hit that subscribe button, make sure you hit that notification bell so you know when I'm posting. And if you're enjoying this content, I would love if you would give me a thumbs up. It does help my videos get out there into the YouTube algorithm for others to see so that I can hopefully inspire and motivate more and more people. All right, let's jump back into cooking, y'all. Okay, we're gonna make a cheese ball now. I've kinda gotten started. I've got two blocks of cheese, so 16 ounces total of sharp cheddar in here. And then I've got two blocks of cream cheese ready to go in. I saw Jen Chapin. I'm sure many of you have watched her. If you haven't, you totally should. She is a mom vlogger. She's not keto, but she is just really, really such a cool person to watch. I really enjoy her channel. Anyway, she made cheese balls, and they looked so good. So I'm going to make some cheese balls for this party. I think she said she got the recipe in a magazine like years and years ago. I will link her video down below, and if you go to her video, you can get her recipe. So there's a recipe for a classic cheddar cheese ball and a bacon ranch. We're going to go with bacon ranch. So 8 ounces of softened cream cheese and 8 ounces of cheddar. Basically, she uses fresh parsley and fresh dill and then some garlic, and that's kind of the combination that gives you the ranch. And she also used some onion powder, y'all. I don't have any onion powder, so I am going to probably use a little bit of my Penzi's Buttermilk Ranch. All right, so I'm going to try and make it maybe two different flavors. So we'll do half, one stick of cream cheese and half of this shredded cheese. And we're going to add our garlic. We're going to add our herbs. We've got our dill and our parsley. Two tablespoons of mayonnaise. Alright, there's two tablespoons of mayonnaise. We're going to go with a little bit of Worcestershire sauce. Mayonnaise, garlic, with a little bit of cayenne. Just a little bit of spicy cayenne pepper. Get a little bit of that. Put the top on it. And I think I just blew the circuit, y'all. It's done. I'm going to make the next one. This one I'm going to leave as is, and I'm going to roll. plan to roll it in nuts. The next one I'm going to make, I'm going to plan to roll in bacon. What I have here, y'all, is saran wrap. I took one piece going one direction, one piece going the other direction. Plop it down on here. So we're going to bring the sides up of our saran wrap and twist it. So we've got like a ball, like a package. Then you're going to just use your hands and form it into a ball the best you can. We're gonna put it in the refrigerator just like this to firm up. So we're gonna make one more. I think I'll probably season the next one a little differently. Gonna add a little bit of garlic seasoning to this one. Y'all, the flavor is phenomenal. I just, I've tasted both of them just to make sure the seasoning was right. See if I wanted to add more stuff. This stuff is so, so good. Oh my gosh. We've got our ranch one and we've got our garlic bacon. So we're going to throw these into the fridge and then we will roll them later in either nuts or bacon. I'm not exactly sure what I'm going to roll them in yet, but these are going to be so good. So here is our gingerbread. I had a little taste of it because it, came, it didn't come out clean. Some of it stuck. So I tasted it and it is very tasty. Over here, we're still working on our nuts. It is time for me to add a half a cup of water, stir it and go for another half an hour. So that's what I'm gonna do next here with the nuts. Here are our gingerbread cookies. I gave up trying to make them look like gingerbread because frankly, it's just too much work. And I just want them to taste like gingerbread. I frankly don't really care what they look like. So this was the last batch when I got tired. 
But here's the gingerbread. We, we really did get quite a few of the gingerbread snowmen. This is them. They, they're a really good consistency. You could very easily put icing on these. I don't think I'm going to take the time, but you really could. I personally think the texture is great for a gingerbread cookie, but it tastes a little too erythritol for me. I truthfully did not even use the amount that they said to. I used the less of the sugar substitute than they said to. They still taste a little erythritol to me, that cooling sensation that I just don't really enjoy. So, I don't know. I don't know that I'd make these again. We'll see what everybody else in the family thinks. Jason liked them a lot. He said they were really, really good. Here are our nuts coming out of the crock pot. It's kind of hard to see because they're so dark, but what we're supposed to do is put them on lined baking sheets to let them chill. I'm going to make a cheesecake fluff, y'all. I want to make a dip that people can dip cookies or different things like that in. I'm gonna have a charcuterie board for my party that's cheese and meats, and then I'm gonna have like a cookie tray one. So there'll be cookies and stuff, and I'm gonna have a cheesecake fluff, and I'm going to have a chocolate peppermint fluff for people to dip their cookies in. I thought that would be kind of cool. So we've got some keto cookies that we've made, and then I bought some non-keto cookies. So I'm just gonna make a big batch of this fluff, and then I'll separate it in half and make half of it the chocolate peppermint, and half of it a plain white cheesecake. Two sticks of cream cheese to one cup of heavy cream. That's what's going in first. And we're gonna get that all nice and fluffy. Oh, and we're making a mess. Let's do that a little more slowly, Erica. The next thing that I'm gonna add is sweetener. I'm gonna use this Christmas cookie skinny syrup. I ended up doing one more tablespoon of this Christmas cookie, and then I'm gonna use this one-on-one -on -one flavored cinnamon roll and add a few drops of it to kind of flavor this cheesecake. So this is gonna be my cinnamon cheesecake fluff, and now I'm gonna make a chocolate peppermint cheesecake fluff out of the remainder. So this is the other half of the dip. I, what I put in it is about half a teaspoon of this mint extract. And then I'm gonna do half a pack of this chocolate pudding. I think that'll give it a good consistency. So we're gonna go in with half a pack of this chocolate pudding. I thought this would stir together super easily. I'm thinking I'm gonna need to put it back in the KitchenAid mixer and let it mix itself. I'm gonna add a little bit more heavy cream to this. This is not a recipe, y'all, and it's not like I've even ever seen anybody do this, so hopefully it'll turn out. We shall see. It sounded like something that would work. Here is everything that we accomplished today. We made egg casserole. We made two cheese balls. We made two kinds of cheesecake fluff. This is a chocolate peppermint, and this is a cinnamon roll cheesecake. Both of these cheese balls are ready to be rolled. I haven't quite finished them yet, but one I'm gonna roll in chopped pecans, and one I'm gonna roll in peppered bacon. These are so delicious, y'all. Oh my gosh. I tasted them like off the beater. Oh my gosh, y'all. I'm so glad I made those. This is buffalo dip. It is in a glass container that I can store it in and then I can cook it in this and serve it in this. I made a gingerbread loaf and this is so good. I made five million pounds of nuts, it seems like. We actually put some in the freezer, but these turned out phenomenally. And then we made a ton of gingerbread. I feel like they're a little too erythritol but Jason really, really likes them. He's standing guard here because he really wants to come taste them with the cheesecake fluff. So the last thing we made is this coleslaw, and then now, Jason, you're allowed. <laughs> come, come taste. All right, here we go. He's gonna taste test. These are really for the party, but we'll go ahead and taste them. Oh yeah. Is that good? Yeah. You can try the... That's something special right there. Yeah, the chocolate peppermint one is great. Right. This is really, this is really good too. This is not as decadent like as this. It's more of a basic cheesecake. If I would've tasted this one first, but this is so decadent and rich. Yeah. Bye, y'all. I hope you have a blessed day.